Hi there. Today we're going to look at an unknown transistor on a transistor curve tracer. And this is a Bean K501 here. This is the curve tracer. And this is the oscilloscope, which is the uh, Tektronix Type 565 dual beam oscilloscope. Now transistor curve tracers are really helpful in trying to just determine house part numbers or if you've got just transistors or FETs laying around and you don't know their gain uh, the best thing to do is to have one of these things around and throw it in a curve tracer and away you go and you can figure out its, its uh, dynamic gain and static gain and all that kind of stuff figure out its breakdown voltage and, and there's a whole bunch of different kind of mathematical things that you can figure out with your transistor today we're going to focus on AC current gain or dynamic current gain and uh, we're not going to do the uh, the static current gain or DC today. We'll just focus on the uh, dynamic current gain of this uh, transistor here. All right, so each one of these boxes, they all set up a little bit differently. So I won't get into the setup of the box. I'll, ex I'll explain how it is set up. But um, to actually align the scope to the box is a, is a bit of a process. And chances are not too many people own a BNK501. And I'll be yammering on here for about... Uh, you know five or ten minutes just on the setup procedure it was is quite a quite a uh, procedure in fact I actually added switches to this box on the far side here in order to make it a little bit easier to set up so of course is aligning this box to your oscilloscope's graticule and um, you know that's uh, a little bit time consuming so so on the oscilloscope here on the bottom we've got uh, from here to here is the voltage reading so on the horizontal axis here, we've got zero and we have 10 volts here, the center point being five volts. So it's one volt per box on the bottom. And that goes from the beginning here to the end, right? Now on this axis here, which is the vertical axis, we've got the current in for the collector, okay? So each box on the screen here, starting from the baseline is one milliamp. So you've got one milliamp, two milliamps, three milliamps, four milliamps, and so on up the screen. And the actual steps you see here, this is zero, one step, two step, three step, four step, you know, and up the screen, that is the base current. So this is, at this particular point here, this is 10 microamps, 20 microamps, 30 microamps, 40 microamps, and so forth, up the screen. And that's set up by this knob here. It's set to the 10 microamp portion, right to that little alignment arrow. This is set to this little alignment arrow here, which is one milliamp per division collector current. And then of course, this is variable to wherever you want on your screen to uh, look at it. So our measurement that we're gonna make today is gonna be at five volts, which is the center of the screen. So we'll, we'll leave our transistor up at this point here. So to make the, the current collector current measurement, we have to figure out the delta between two points, or the difference between two points. And uh, we'll choose this point here, and this point here, okay? So, how we calculate that, this is zero, so we go counting vertically, we're counting the collector current now. We've got one milliamp, two milliamps, three milliamps, and this is about uh, 3.5 milliamps, or thereabouts, okay? About 3.5 milliamps to this point here. So we'll mark that down on our piece of paper, as our first figure, 3.5 milliamps. Now we got to count up to this line because this is the second one we're going to use. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, about 6.8, 6.8 milliamps to this point right here. So that's the second figure that we're going to write down on our piece of paper. So to figure out the delta between those two points, you just take 6.8 minus 3.5 gives us 3.3 milliamps of delta collector current. That's the difference between those two points. So we write 3.3 down is our delta collector current. Now we need to figure out the current per step. This is very simple, okay? This is at the five volt point. And now we know we don't count the graticule for this, we just count the steps. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now we're taking it from this point here and this point here again, right? So we go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. What's the delta between these two points? 20. Right? Because so we got 10, 20, 30, 40. The difference between those two points is 20. So we write that down, 20 microamps. In order to do the mathematical equation, we have to convert microamps into milliamps. So 20 microamps converts to 0 0.02 milliamps. Now, in order to finish the equation, we take our collector current delta, which is 3.3 milliamps, and we divide that by our, our delta base current, which is 0 0.02 milliamps, 
and we end up with a figure of 165 so that our HFE is 165 at 5 volts because we took it at this point here on the screen. If we took it anywhere else on the screen it would work out to be a little bit different because you can see the, the lines, the actual steps don't follow the graticule evenly. So it would be a little bit different at this point than it would be at this point, but we use the 5 volt point to calculate this. And that's just how simple it is to calculate your transistor's AC current gain. I hope this was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. And uh, down the road I'll have a lot more different kinds of measurements with different gear and might even go into this curve tracer a little bit more and look at FETs and, and um, larger power transistors and so on and so forth. Okay, see you later.